What's going on everybody? I'm so glad to see you once more and again as you have clicked and joined here as we go through another walk in the word, excuse me. Uh, today we're going to continue talking about identity and really kind of start wrapping this thing up, really understanding the essence of Christian living in Christ. And for those of you who have, may have never heard of what Christian living essentially is, we are purposing to live a life reflecting Christ, who we have now accepted at this point, Savior and Lord. But even if you haven't, even if you aren't there, uh, this is something good to see um, because Christian living does sound like a lot of work, it does sound like a lot of things that a lot of us may not feel uh, we have the confidence to obtain, confidence to continuously do, confidence to live out, the strength to live out, but understand that it's not about us, but it's about Christ who gives us the strength to pursue after him. I want to share with you some scripture here that will help us out just a bit. Uh, Paul writes to us in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 20, he reads this, But you have not so learned Christ, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the, to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him who needs. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. So let's understand that Paul sounds like he's given us a lot of rules, a lot of regulations. Hey, do this and don't do that. Don't do that and don't do this. But listen, this isn't about rules and this isn't about regulation. But what this is about is a relationship because this is how we are going to attain such a way of living. It's never going to be on our own, but it's going to be by completely depending on Christ as our source and way of living, as our Savior and Lord, receiving him into our lives. That way we are able to be to be granted such access to a way of living. And by living in Christ, we're going to be able to strive to do what Paul shares with us in these verses. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like we're going to need some strength. Listen, I'm, I'm admittingly like we, we need this strength. We're going to need Christ to do this, but we can't do it on our own. This is another thing I want to share with you before we uh, close this out. Understand that everyone has a starting point. Yeah, everyone has a starting point. There's no Christian alive that started out as a Christian. <laughs> we were all somewhere doing something and in need of him. And we all have a starting point. I came to Christ and I wasn't perfect. You could come to Christ and maybe you aren't perfect. None of us are perfect even in Christ. We're still sinners and we still fall short. But leaning on Christ and, and a lean, leaning on him and allowing him to take control over our lives is what allows us to grow in him, even through the difficulties and struggles that we face of ourselves, of our desires, and of the daily battle with the flesh that we endure. Listen, Christ is going to give us the strength through this, through this journey, through this process, to walk in the spirit. No, this doesn't mean temptations and struggles won't come knocking on our door, but by growing in Christ, by pursuing our relationship with him, by, by, by prayer, reading, worship, by spending time with him, giving him our time, giving him our attention, giving him our heart. He is going to help us overcome those ways to where even when we come to the point of maybe even considering our desires over his, our ways over his, our wants over his, growing in Christ will take, will take a hold of our lives to the point where we'll be able to look at those temptations and be like, nah, I'm good because it's only happens by way of Christ's strength that is poured in us that we completely depend on and not of ourselves. Christian living is not easy. I don't wanna pretend that it is, but if we're going to do it correctly, we gotta to continue to depend on Christ and lean on him all the way. 
Christian living starts with us surrendering our lives, saying, Christ, I'm all yours. I can't do it on my own. I won't do it on my own. You now have control over every area of my life. And no, we don't come to him perfect, but when we receive Christ, he's going to start pushing out all those things that are unlike him to make us more like him. Reflecting him and reflecting him everywhere we go is the essence of Christian living, but we can't do it without him. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I can't wait to see you again shortly, but until then, peace.